Hello everyone and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature on your screen which you can use to type in questions at any time during this session. If you do have questions for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question as well. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is also just one of many sessions happening this evening so be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. And this presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now I'll turn it over to our first college, which is GSU Channel Island. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining. My name is Caitlin Ellison. I am an admission counselor here for CSU Channel Islands. So I will be going through a lot of general information today. I will be going quite quickly. So have your phones out and ready. You can see I have QR codes on every one of my slides so you can get more information if you're interested in learning more about that information. So first off, we are part of the CSU system. We are the 23rd campus. We are the newest CSU. We were founded in 2002 and being one of the newer CSUs, we are relatively smaller, about 7,000 students, which does mean our average class size is about a 22 to one. That does mean you'll have a lot of time to get to know your professors and your fellow students. And we are also a 58% first generation campus, which means we have a lot of resources if you are the first in your family to graduate from a four year institution. Where are we located? CSU Channel Islands is a little misleading. We are not on an island. We are located in Camarillo, California, about an hour north of LA and about an hour south of Santa Barbara. It is beautiful here with an average 76 degrees and we have an amazing mascot, Echo the Dolphin. We have 26 majors and 37 minors on our campus. All the red majors are our most popular majors on our campus. And we have two impacted majors, our mechatronics engineering for our first time freshmen and our nursing program. Impacted means that there are more eligible students than space available for these majors, but every other major on our campus is not impacted. So even though business and psychology are our most popular majors, as long as you are meeting our admissions requirements, you are guaranteed a spot in that field. Just a little bit more about our two impacted programs. For my first time freshman, you're not gonna be applying directly to the nursing major. You will be applying as a pre-nursing major, which is not impacted, and they will help you through uh, the process of getting the prerequisites and applying to the nursing program. However, admissions to that nursing program is not guaranteed. Mechatronics Engineering is our newest program. It's in its fifth year now, and it's kind of a combination of an engineering field and mathematics and all that good stuff. So it's really fun. Think of like robotics and things like that. And they do also have an additional criteria here for their admissions. We have lots of student resources on our campus. Just a few to touch on. EOP, our educational opportunity program, amazing for first generation college students. They help with tutoring, scholarships, mentorship programs. We also have a disability accommodations as needed, a student health center, which is very important right now, and an awesome study abroad center as well. We have our own rec center, but we are unfortunately not NCAA, so we do have club sports if you're interested in playing, uh, playing sports on our campus. And something very unique to CSU Channel Islands is we do have a waterfront program. So this is free to students. You can go out to our Oxnard Harbor and you can take sailing, kayaking, and sand up paddleboarding courses, again, for free. They're very fun. They have beginner all the way to expert. And of course, we cannot be called Channel Islands without having some connection to our islands out here. So we actually have a research station out on Santa Rosa Island. And students can get out there in lots of different ways. They can go out with our outdoor adventures club through our rec center, go on hiking trips and camping trips, as well as with your classes to do research, such as in Chicano, Chicano studies, in anthropology, environmental studies, biology, all that good stuff. So lots of great ways to get out and see our beautiful Channel Islands. We also have housing on our campus. We can guarantee housing for all four years. For my first time freshman, you will be placed in Santa Rosa, which is typically our first year dorms, then Santa Cruz, Anacapa, and then the University Town Center. And we have had students living on campus this year, and we are planning to have students living on there next year. Cost of attendance, just real quick, I wanna to touch upon 
this amazing financial aid TV program that we have. So check it out. It'll help you with lots of different playlists to get to know how to pay for college. Of course, um, our application, so that's gonna be open up in October. Our application is through Cal State Apply for all of our CSUs. It is $70 per campus that you send that application to. And just be aware that it is self-reported information. So make sure what everything you're, you are reporting is correct. And just so you know, our admissions requirements, you do have to graduate from high school, complete your A through G requirements. For my California students, it'll be a 2.5 or higher A through G GPA. For my out-of-state students, a 3.0 or higher. And for fall 2022, we are not using SAT or ACT for admissions criteria. Just a heads up on our A through Gs again, so you can see them. You do have to pass them with a C minus or higher, and we are accepting credit or pass for winter 2020 to spring 2021 grades. And please make sure you are taking two years of the same language and one year or two semesters of a visual performing arts in the same discipline. If you do fall between that 2.0 or 2.49, if you're a California resident or a 2.47, 2.99, every CSU will be going over a different uh, supplemental criteria. Here are our CSU channel islands, and this is also posted on our website. If you're interested, we also have a virtual tour. So come check us out. And here is our contact information. So please stay connected with us via social media. You can get to know us better through live chat and you can reach out to us um, on our admissions email. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have CSU Northridge. Okay, I am almost there, here we go. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Gigi McGuire, I'm from Cal State Northridge. We call ourselves CSUN, so um, that's kind of our nickname, but we wanna just tell you a little bit about our campus. Okay, let's see, here we go. So CSUN, where is it? Like, I don't know where you are, but if you're anywhere near the Los Angeles area or if you, if you have been here before, we're very close to a lot of things. Um, so we're located in the San Fernando Valley. You can see by these beautiful pictures here, postcards here that we're, we're not far from Universal Studios, we're not far from uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain, the Getty Center is just over the hill. Um, Disneyland's a little bit farther, Dodger Stadium is close. So we're, we're really like right here in the valley as we call it, but not far from everything that happens in Los Angeles. So um, we are not far from our, some of our sister campuses that are on here tonight, in fact. Uh, but that just gives you an idea of where we're located. So a few things that you need to know about our campus. We are one of the larger ones, okay? So we're at 38,815 students this year. We have over 60 majors that you could choose from. Um, that's the undergraduate majors, as well as um, master's and doctoral programs too for later. Um, we have about 17 sports. We are division one, and um, that's men's and women's sports added together. And, and our students are um, used to min, um, average class size of about 30 students or so. So um, that's about the size of our campus. We're, you know, based on our location and based on the size, we are, again, our area that we attract students from is pretty far, pretty wide across the state. Um, we have, a, I wanted to just mention some of these resources that our students um, have to support them as they're uh, going through, you know, getting their degree. And as you can see here, um, we have our career center, we have our disability resources and educational services. We also have things like our uh, university counseling services, as well as our, it's not here, but the academic advising hub um, and lots of things that students could actually be involved in. Um, there's clubs and organizations. We have a little over 350 of those that students can get involved in. Um, there's other activities that uh, happen for students, whether it's our um, Matador Nights or our, our Summer Movie Fest or, uh, you know, some of the, some, well, we have Big Show. I don't know if we're gonna have Big Show, show next year, but uh, lots of activities for students to be involved, whether it's a club, a sports club, a club related to your major or to your um, special interest that you might have, lots of ways to get involved. Um, and so that's everything you can do outside of the classroom. Now, with regard to our majors, I mentioned we have over 60 majors. 
Um, these are the ones that are more popular, we would say more unique majors. So a lot of students will come to us because they know about our very strong business program. And our business program has about six different options under it. And um, you can study you know, and be prepared to go into things like uh, taking your CPA exam or going directly to, uh, into business. You could have an entrepreneurship minor and actually start a business. Uh, so we prepare students to do that or even to go on and get an MBA. And we have, we have lots of uh, partnerships with um, a variety of companies and, and uh, networking that helps students to succeed and to be ready to go to work right after they graduate. Our cinema and television arts or CTVA major uh, is one of our impact majors. And our, our students who graduate and who are current students really get involved in the entertainment industry. Where we're located, we're very close to Burbank, which is where all the magic happens. So students will have uh, internships and jobs while they're actually in school. And we have a, a very strong connection to the entertainment industry. So Cinema Television Arts or CTVA um, will allow you to work in every aspect of the entertainment industry. So that is a very popular major at our campus. Deaf Studies is a unique major for us. It allows students to um, get a degree and to learn more about working with the deaf and hard of hearing community. We also have about 150 deaf students on our campus and, and a few more faculty as well. And the deaf studies major allows people to actually uh, learn how to work within it, whether you wanna be a teacher, you wanna be an advocate or an interpreter or go into policy making, things like that. Um, so we, we also provide uh, services for our deaf students and faculty and staff as well. Our ethnic and cultural studies range from Africana studies, Chicano studies, Armenian studies, Asian, Asian studies. We have lots of, of um, you know, cultural departments that help students to kind of see the world from a different angle. And, and you don't have to be in that culture to study in it, but if you are, it also helps you to kind of strengthen your knowledge about your own culture. And, and we have a long standing history with these departments and they do a lot of good for our students. And you can actually major in them or you can minor in them or just take some of your courses in those areas. And then lastly, our, our music major, which is the only major that actually depends more on the audition than it does your grades. But our music major produces um, students that are composers and performers and, and you know, they just, uh, every aspect of the music industry, um, you do have to audition, even if you're gonna do music therapy, you have to audition for this major and that audition determines your admissions to the campus. So if you have more questions about that, we can give you more information about our music department. Okay, so Caitlin already went over the A through G, but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our uh, more specific admissions. If you are in our local area, we're looking for a 2.65. If you're not, then it has to be a little bit higher. This year was about a 3.1, I believe. So that gives you an idea if you wanna take a picture of that um, and we can answer more questions about that. And then if you want to talk to one of our counselors, here we all are, a beautiful bunch. And you can um, look at that link, take a picture of that, use that link, and you can get to all of us. We all handle different parts of the state and, and uh, international and all that too. So you can ask us specific questions if you like. All right. And that's our main email address, website, phone number if you have questions. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the institutions presenting today, please don't hesitate to put those into the Q&A. Up next, we have CSU Maritime Academy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica with uh, CSU Maritime Academy. We commonly go by um, Cal Maritime because our full name is California State University Maritime Academy, and that doesn't fit on most job applications. Um, so I just like to start this presentation really quickly with a bird's eye view of our campus. We are on um, Morro Cove, which is actually in the San Francisco Bay. So we kind of have, you know, waterfront views for the majority of our classroom spaces, as well as our residence halls. So lots of, of wonderful wonderful Instagram spots, um, and there's always a great breeze, which is beneficial, you know, in the in the uh, late spring and, and uh, towards the fall as the heat starts to come in. 
So we're a little bit of a unique part of the California State University system in the sense that we existed for almost 70 years before we joined the CSU. So as a result, we do things a little differently. We wear uniforms that are militaristic, even though there is no military requirement for our students. We have a 100% travel requirement for our students, which means every single student is required to travel in an academic capacity with Cal Maritime. So that is separate from the more traditional study abroad semester opportunity. Um, we also require all of our students to complete internships prior to graduation. Some majors actually have to do two. Um, so it's just part of our more regimented learning style because of our specialization in the, the majors that we offer. We're also the smallest CSU. Um, we have just under a thousand students enrolled, even though we've been around since 1929. Again, that specialization is what keeps us um, small and, and uh kind of um in small class sizes and keeps that enrollment nice and tight so the seven majors that we offer are all around the water that's our niche that's what we do is is the maritime industry so um we have majors that study the economics of the ocean and trade that happens we have study uh majors that study travel on the ocean both actually navigating the vessels like being a cruise ship captain or being a tugboat captain and maintaining the engine systems that make those ships go so those are called um marine engineers now our engineering programs grew over the years and so actually our most popular major is a land-based, um, non-maritime related engineering major. It's mechanical engineering. Um, it's gained massive recognition for its sustainability um, uh, for wind energy. We enter the um, Department of Energy's wind competition every year and we place and we're uh, making sure that all of our students are getting hands-on experience. So our mechanical engineering program, even though it's a shore-based engineering, it's, it is our most popular major. Um, I also want to know oceanography is our newest major. Just opened that this year. So the first incoming class um, where, you know, unfortunately they were taking classes virtually, but they hopefully will return to campus and their in-person labs um, this next fall, fingers crossed. Um, so our oceanogra oceanography program uh, is a marine science program, but it's not necessarily just marine biology. So it's the study of the entire ocean. Um, what's great about our oceanography program is that being on the water and having multiple ships in our, our little boat basin, our oceanography students have labs uh, spaces that they can take out onto the water to continue their research. So some of our programs are impacted, um, but lightly so. The engineering majors, all three of them, are competitive to get into and marine transportation as well. Business, global studies, and oceanography at this point in time are not impacted, so they are not competitive to get into. Um, I mentioned that beautiful uniform. Like I said, it's a militaristic uniform, but there is no military requirement for our students. Um, it's like a private high school experience where you wear a uniform to class, but if you're not in class, you're not required to wear the uniform. So we do have a regimented structure, which means we call our students cadets. We have um, kind of a higher code of conduct for them, an ethic, uh, ethics standard for them that uh, is not seen at most public institutions, but it's all tradition from the Maritime Academy is designed to help them build their sense of professionalism as they move forward into their careers down the line. I mentioned that international travel component. Like I said, it is a graduation requirement for all majors. So where you go and what you do depends on your major. So not everyone goes out on our 500 foot training ship. The engineers and the marine transportation students are either going to go out once or twice, depending on if they're going to work on ships down the line. And then the business, global studies, and oceanography majors fly to another country and they live in that country for about a month. So it's designed to be more of a professional immersion experience. Like I said, these are separate from the traditional study abroad options which are still available to our students because we're part of the glorious CSU system. So for uh, eligibility, as was mentioned, we are not taking SAT or ACT scores. So what we're looking for is about a 2.5 academic GPA. And that's going to be, of course, from 10th and 11th grade. Um, if for the non-impacted majors, so again, that's business, global studies, and oceanography, if a student doesn't quite have a 2.5, we'll look at another set of, of factors. We're going to look at how many courses you took beyond the minimum in the A through G categories. We're going to look at how your GPA improved between sixth and seventh semester, which is your end of your junior 
junior year and beginning of your senior year. We'll look at how close you are to the academy. Are you a resident of Solano County or not? So there's little points we can do to bring you into eligibility. However, for our impacted major, because of the competitive st uh, status, we can't um, use those extra points to bring a student into eligibility. Um, so you do want to make sure that you have at least that 2.5 or 3.0 if you're um, from outside of California. One thing, if you are interested in mechanical engineering, absolutely have to have pre-calculus. It is a graduation requirement. So for financial aid, um, tuition, uh, we have a few extra things. You do have to pay for the uniforms. You also have to pay for summer semesters. So those things do increase, but we do have some of the highest employment rates in the CSU and some of the highest average salaries. It pays to sail on a ship because you don't spend any money. So this is a great opportunity for your screenshot. This is a lot of upcoming information about like our virtual open house, um, ongoing counselor talks that we have, opportunities to do virtual visits, and of course, my information, because I'm going to be your best friend, I'm the main admissions counselor for high school students. So screenshot that you can call me, you can email me, and I'm going to be happy to help. Thanks so much for your time, you guys. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have San Diego State. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Adriana Ramirez. Um, I am one of the admissions counselors at San Diego State University. So we'll go ahead and just jump into some fast facts about SDSU. Uh, we have over 34,000 students total, so we are one of the bigger CSU schools. Um, average student to teacher ratio is 25 to 1. We are number 30 in the Forbes America's Best Value Colleges. Um, my favorite fact about SDSU is we are top 35 nationwide for our ethnic diversity. And of course, study abroad. We are number one in California and number five in the nation for our study abroad program um, or for the number of students we send studying abroad. We have over 300 different programs and we go to about 70 different countries. So there are tons of options here at SDSU. Now we have about 200 academic degree choices. Now for our undergraduate degrees, we have about 90 undergraduate degree choices. All of those majors are impacted at San Diego State University, okay? Now we are um, the second largest city in California. Uh, we are also a very diverse city. Campus itself is very centrally located within the city of San Diego. We're 10 miles from the beach, 10 miles from downtown. Um, and we also have a trolley. It is our train, which I guess that's what you would call it. Uh, what makes it very convenient for our students is we actually have a trolley stop directly on campus. So you can just hop on the trolley within 15, 20 minutes, you're in downtown, which is pretty great. Now, um, as I mentioned, study abroad, that's one of the features that we do love to highlight here at SDSU and we are very proud of. We love promoting student success here. We are also an undergraduate research institution. So that does allow a lot more hands-on opportunity and hands-on learning with classes, internships, jobs, which is great. We have our Weber Honors College. This is our Honors College that you do have to apply to separately from the application and be admitted into the Weber's Honors College. Um, study abroad is a requirement. You live in the residential uh, floor with all of the other honors students. And there are some other oper scholarship opportunities that you are able to apply for um, if you are admitted into the Weber Honors College. Now, career services, this by far is one of the best resources you can utilize here at SDSU. Our career services, they do everything from internship fairs, job fairs, they help you with building your resume. Um, they also um, spearhead our Aztec mentoring program, which you are teamed up with either an alumni or a local business and within that area, within the career field that you would like to pursue, which is great. Now, some admissions, um, uh, important updates, as I'm sure you've seen on all the slides um, earlier, our application does go live October 1st. We are all a part of the CSU system, um, so it will be all the same information. And of course, in alignment with the other CSU schools, we will not be requiring the SAT or ACT um, for spring 2021, fall 2021, spring 2022, and of course, for fall 2022 applicants. Now, you've also seen this as well, A through G course curriculum. Again, all of uh, the CSU schools followed the same A through G course curriculum. So very similar to the three previous schools that you've heard. Um, and then with the grade point average, we do look at the 10th through 12th grades through the A through G courses. Now you do wanna make sure that you maintain your overall grade point average through your senior year. And all of these grades are self-reported. So you will want to make sure that you have a copy of your transcript out so you're reporting as accurate as possible on the application. 
student involvement. Um, not only do we like to promote student success, but we have tons of ways for our students to get involved on campus. We have over 350 student organizations that you are to join, um, are able to join here at SDSU. So trust me when I say you will find your niche here. Uh, we have our associated student government body that you can be a part of as well. In addition to that, we have 46 fraternities and sororities on campus too for our students to be a part of. Um, more student life and recreation. As I mentioned earlier, we have our Aztec mentor program. This is uh, brought, by, brought by our career services department um, and they will help you um, be teamed up with either again an SDSU alumni or maybe um, a local businessman in the career field that you would like to pursue. We have our Arts Alive program. You don't have to be an arts major to be a part of the Arts Alive program. We have our Aztec Recreation Center and Aquaplex. This is our state-of-the-art gym on campus that is, yes, available to our students. And we also have our Mission Bay Aquatic Center. We not only have classes here, but we also have different rentals or different classes that you and your friends can do, or maybe if you have family coming in town, you can go and rent specific, um, you know, paddle boards or kayaks at a student discounted rate, which is really great. So housing, uh, we do have a two-year residential requirement. So all of our students that are graduating outside of the San Diego County area, um, you are required to live on campus for the first two years. Uh, living on campus at SDSU is great. Uh, what we have seen with our students that live on campus is they tend to have 11, 13% higher GPA. We have affordable and convenient meal plans. We have over 30 different dining locations with about 20,000 daily menu options. So trust me when I say you will not go hungry here at SDSU. Um, no commute. All of your residential halls are within walking distance um, to campus, to your classes. We also have our red and black shuttle as well. Um, no costly utility bills. That's all, all included um, when you live on campus. And of close, close-knit friendships. Um, we do want to make sure that we are creating a great environment for you. And then one of the last things I want to go over with you is sports. We are NCAA Division I for our sports. Um, all of our home games for students are able to attend the games for free. And then we do offer intramural clubs and club sports as well for you to join in. So we love our sports. We love our basketball team. Um, the game, they tip off tonight. So hopefully um, we have a win. And then this is um, our list of our admissions counselors. Again, we have tons of admissions counselors here at SDSU. I will make sure to go ahead and put in the contact information as well if I have any California residents joining um, us on this call today. So thank you again for joining us and I'll turn it back over. Thank you so much for your presentation. As another quick reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of our institutions today, please do not hesitate to put those into the Q&A feature on your screen. Our next college is Sonoma State. Awesome, thank you so much. Hello everyone, welcome. So I'm just gonna start sharing my screen here. So welcome, uh, my name is Carissa Sims. I'm here from Sonoma State University. So just a little bit about Sonoma State um, at a glance. We are one of the smaller CSUs. Um, we are roughly 8,649 students. We were established in 1960 and we officially became a part of the CSU system in 1961. Um, our mascot is the Sea Wolf, which is from the uh, mythical uh, Jack London novels, The Sea Wolf. Um, and you can see here on the California map, uh, Sonoma State is located in the northern region of California, uh, right neighboring, uh, neighboring our uh, fellow CSU uh, Cal Maritime. Moving along. So Sonoma State, kind of what we're known for. So Sonoma State, we have a, a top nursing program here. It is also one of our impacted majors here. We also have the number three most amazing campus art center, our Green Music Center here at Sonoma State University is what one of the things that we're well known for. It's a relatively new building and it's just acoustically an amazing building, amazing campus. In addition, we rank number four for freshmen for your graduation rate in the CSU system, meaning that freshmen that come here really succeed, really thrive and graduate within that four year span of time. And we rank number four out of all the CSUs. In addition, we're the number 14 top public school in the West and that was according to US News. And like I said, with Sonoma State being a relatively smaller CSU, our average uh, student to faculty ratio is 23 to one. And our average class size is roughly 25 to 29 students. Moving along. Awesome, so Sonoma State is an impacted school, meaning that there are some majors that have additional requirements. Those being our bio major, our business major, our communications major, 
our criminology and criminal justice major, our early childhood studies, kinesiology, which is the study of human movement, our liberal studies major, which is essentially called our Hetchin School of Liberal Arts, which prepares students to become school teachers, our pre-nursing major, psychology and sociology. And moving on, so Sonoma State, we have so many academic programs, academic opportunities for students. We have over 45 majors, and within those majors, we have over 70 distinct concentrations. So there are so many options for students here at Sonoma State University. And with Sonoma State being a relatively smaller campus, we also have a research focus here on campus. Um, and it's pretty accessible for students as well, which is something that's very important if you know you're a student that wants to um, progress past the bachelor stage and get your master's or doctorate, having that research experience is so important. And Sonoma State has a community that fosters research that really encourages students to participate in research. I was a researcher when I was a student here at Sonoma State University and I had such a great experience and it was so easy finding access to these research opportunities. In addition, we are part of the National Student Exchange. We have 64, over 64, um, plus study abroad programs on six different continents. And something that's really cool and unique about Sonoma State is that no matter where you study around the world, be that Asia, Europe, Africa, you'll be paying the same exact tuition as you'd be paying here on Sonoma State's campus, no matter where you go in the world. And that's just one way that Sonoma State really encourages students to receive that multicultural understanding of their major and also making sure that that is uh, within students' financial means to do so. Moving along. Awesome, so Sonoma State is an NCAA Division II school. Um, sport, uh, we have 12 NCAA sports teams, some of which being basketball, baseball, golf, soccer, softball, volleyball, and we have a 17 club in intramural sports, some of which being cheer, dance, equestrian, lacrosse, rowing, and rugby. We also have 20 Greek organizations and seven of which being multicultural um, Greek organizations. And we have over 120 plus clubs and organizations here on Sonoma State campus. So um, there are options here for you as well. Um, and there are so many communities to join here on Sonoma State campus. So moving along, something that I always really get excited about um, sharing when I have these presentations is our housing. Sonoma State University is known for having the best housing in, in the nation. Um, so we have six residential villages all named after wines given the fact that Sonoma State is located in the heart of wine country. Um, and unlike other schools, Sonoma State has more of suite and apartment style living, meaning that you, you don't have dorms per se, it's more of like um, apartments or, or castles, some, some people say. Um, so you'll never be sharing a bathroom or a kitchen with more than six people. Um, usually that's no more than three people. And um, you have the option to uh, live alone um, as well as you know have your own bathroom. So there's just so many options for students and we're known for our housing. We also have living learning communities. So if you're wanting to live somewhere where there is a health focus or um, if you're wanting to live somewhere that is more inclusive to whatever your ethnic or um, gender identity, um, there's so many options for students here. And something that Sonoma State is, is known for as well is we guarantee housing for freshmen and first semester transfer students. So that housing is guaranteed and freshmen are not required to live on campus, but most do. 90% of our first year students live on campus and that is by choice because Sonoma State has some of the best housing in the nation. We are ranked number 12 by the Princeton Review as one of the best residential dorms in um, dorm communities in the nation. Um, so I highly recommend living on campus. Awesome. So like other CSUs, we have so many academic resources, some of which being one-on-one -on -one pre admissions advising and next steps advising. Um, so essentially that help that those um, that assistance when um, you're applying to Sonoma State University, as well as our dream center for our undocumented students, as well as um, students of immigrant families and allies, as well as our um, EOP. We have EOP like other CSUs as well. Um, we also have our Puerto Project, which, which is our program uh, that is abbreviated to preparing underrepresented educators to realizing their teaching ambitions. Recently, Sonoma State became a Hispanic serving institution, meaning that 30% of our student body um, identifies as Hispanic or Latinx. So uh, in a way to uh, respond to that, Sonoma State and California is encouraging more Spanish speaking students to become school teachers. So that program was adopted once Sonoma State became a Hispanic serving institution. Moving along, so updates for 2021 and 2022. Like other CSUs, we are accepting credit pass for our A through G requirements. Um, we are not requiring the SAT, and we are utilizing the multi-factor scoring system for any students that fall below the 2.5 GPA requirement. And moving along here. 
So prospective steps to enrollment. So Sonoma State is, I'm pretty sure at this point, the only CSU that our application is still open for the fall 2021 semester. That application deadline is March 21st, 2021. So if you need any assistance with completing that application, or if you're still you know, wondering more information about Sonoma State University, please feel free to reach out. With all CSUs, you'll be completing the application on Cal State Apply um, and completing that application by the priority deadline, which is March 2nd. Um, and final transcripts, if you're a freshman, are due by July 10th. So to reach me, I'm in the Student Outreach and Recruiting Department. Feel free to call us, email us, um, as well as our Office of Admissions. And if you're wondering any COVID updates, please feel free to visit the following link. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation. Our final institution for this evening is Humboldt State. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. So my name is Leo, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Humboldt State University. And Humboldt State University is the furthest north California State University campus in the entire California State University system. We're located on the Humboldt Bay. So this photo here um, doesn't really do our, our campus justice because they say HSU stands for Hills and Stairs University. So we're not flat like San Diego or Sac State or or even Sonoma State, there's a bunch of hills. And so people, when, when people come to Humboldt State and students ask what they should do, they, should, they say, you should get a stair stepper because you're gonna go up and down the, all these hills all day long and you can get out across campus easily within 10 minutes, but um, it's definitely a hike. We're located in the traditional homelands of the, of the indigenous uh, Wiat people. Um, and so let's see, I'm gonna go, we're, we, we were established in 1913 as a teacher's college way up here in Humboldt County. The nearest um, institution back then was Chico, or you would have to go all the way down to San Francisco. And so here's a little map for everybody to, to see where we are. We're kind of a hidden gem. We're way up here in Northern California and about 39% of the students here at Humboldt State University come from the Los Angeles area. And the reason why we did a survey is because students wanna get the further take to, to attend a college the furthest college away from their parents without paying out-of-state tuition. And so if you guys haven't heard about out-of-state tuition, you'll learn a little bit more about it as you, as you move forward um, in, your, in your college research. But um, if you're a California student, stay in, 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 in the state of California to save some money. But if you um, are an institution, or if you're looking at an institution, make sure that they participate in the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. And so Humboldt State University does participate in that program. If you're going to come from Florida or from New York, coming to Humboldt State University or to any one of the California State Universities, um, you're, you're, it's going to cost a lot more for them to come to HSU or to any of the California State Universities. So we, any application, all the applications, as people mentioned during the presentation, all the other presentations, um, we all have the same requirements um, in terms of your minimum requirements, grade point averages, A through Gs. Um, for transfer students, but then if they're an impacted, if any of us are impacted, then you have to, um, there's some additional requirements that you have to consider. And so um, at Humboldt State University, we're not an impacted institution. We're a pretty small college. We have about 7,000 students at our institution. Our average class size is only about 30 students per class. You're never going to be in a class where there's 300 people. You guys like see movies where there's like the professor's up on stage and there's a big screen of his face over here and a big screen of his face over here and he's up at the podium and at the end of the um at the lecture they, they walk out of the room you don't really get to talk to them but here at humboldt state university the professors are going to know you by name you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention um <clears throat> and when you guys like i said when you guys uh, we're all part of the 23 campus csu so you're going to use the same application whether you're going to apply to sonoma state if, whether you're applying to um, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, CSU San Marcos, it's all the same application. 
um, A through G's, C's are better. Um, we're not looking at the SAT or ACT. And so just do your guys as best as you guys can right now and um, just just finish strong throughout your, your year. We know that there's a lot of challenges with the, um, the COVID-19, but we're gonna get through this together. And so um, that biggest campus, that biggest um, building that was built first in 1913 was our uh, um, Founders Hall and that faces the ocean. And so we have take a lot of pride in um, our location. So we have this philosophy at Humboldt State University of ditch the desk, get out and get those hands-on learning experiences. And so there's so much education outside the walls of our institution that we really want the students, you guys to get out there and the photos up on top, that's, those, those students are in oceanography. Those students are marine biology, environmental resources engineering. So our front yard is our classroom. Our front yard is the beaches and the ocean and the lagoons and, and um, the rivers and the, and the lakes that are around our, our campus because there's so much learning outside of our, like I said, outside the walls of our institution. And then our backyard, we have 1.5 million acre forest directly attached to our institution. And so you can go out, you can go out of class and go hiking for miles and miles and miles. But the thing about it, that's a classroom as well. So we have wildlife, we have forestry, we have zoology, all those students on top, those guys are all in classes. And so the cool thing about it is that they have, um, you get experience with NOAA. You get, you get experience with Redwood National and State Parks. You get experience with, with, with CDF. You get experience where we have 13 different tribal communities in our area. And you learn about how tribes traditionally managed these lands for thousands of years before non-native contact. And so you, you learn about traditional ecological knowledge with those 13 different tribal communities, with fisheries, with their forestry department, with all, with all those opportunities in different agencies. So at Humboldt, you're not just getting the book work and learning from a book, but you're actually learning from professionals in the field and getting that hands-on experience. So if you plan on leaving and going into graduate school, or if you're planning on going um, directly into the workforce, you're gonna have that experience hands-on here at Humboldt State University. So here's a little bit about our, our, our information about who we are. We're, in a, we're pretty small. So about 17,000 people in Arcata. Um, we're 12 hours from the Los Angeles area. So it is, we are way up here in the Redwood Forest, somewhere out here. Bigfoot exists. Maybe if you choose to come to Humboldt, you might find Bigfoot and become rich and famous. We're about five hours from San Francisco and five hours from Sacramento. Um, our average temperature, we don't get hot. We, we, we're right on the coast. So if it gets 70 degrees here at Humboldt State, I'm taking the day off because it's too hot. So we don't have that 100 degree temperature. And then the, the average, we haven't had snow here in like our, our, we haven't had snow here in seven years. And so 56% um, of our students are under our um, first time students. And we students make a commitment once they leave our institution, we really think about social justice and environmental justice and whatever, whatever, whatever they decide to do with their, in their future careers. We have 50 different majors where you're not impacted. Students do not even live on campus their freshman year. Students can have cars. Those are the main campuses. Those are the main questions that freshmen have. Um, we also have arts and humanities and, and social science as well. So we're not just a science-based um, college student-ran radio station. I'm just going to go through these really quickly. Our kinesiology and athletics lab, teaching. Um, just check us out. You can come in and schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with any of the counselors here at Humboldt State. My cell phone's on the website, my email, direct Zoom one-on-ones. And so um, I, I realized we need to change this slide because now we're not the only undergraduate oceanography program in the CSU, but thank you guys very much. I know I'm over time, but um, yeah, check us out, Humboldt State University. Again, my name is Leo, and thank you guys for coming to this presentation. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us today, both participants and universities. We, you guys close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide us as well. This is also just one of many sessions being hosted so be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. And in about a week you'll be able to find this sessions recording at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and enjoy your evening.